Regina and Celia think about the day as they all make their way to the top. That terrible day, Celia's parents died. The mobile fortress as a whole was attacked, and the kids and people who couldn't fight had to hide. They hid in a safe place, but they could still hear the fight, including the bombs going off and the effects of the battle. In fact, their light goes out and then comes back on all of a sudden. It's not a surprise that the little kids are afraid to support each other. They talk about things that don't matter, and then they fall asleep. The next day. When the fight is over, the shelter door opens, and they can see again. When they come out of the shelter, they see that the city has been destroyed. Almost all of the nobles who fought in that fight died in it. Celia falls to the ground and starts crying right away as she thinks about her parents. Regina tries to comfort her as they both think about what awaits them in the next life. At this point, they take Leo to the seventh mobile fortress, Leo. From afar, he sees the building and asks them what it is. Is that where they were going? They told him how important the fortress is to them and how they keep it safe. In fact, Celia says that they are protecting it and that she would do anything to keep the fortress safe. She can't hide who she is or her responsibilities any longer. When they finally get to the fortress, it's much bigger than Leo thought it would be. There's more to it than that. He calls it an island, but they tell him that their fortress is actually a giant float and not really on the ground. They are trying to push it toward the ocean so that they can attack the void from behind and win the battle, which they have already done. Talk like this. Cellular gets a call saying that she sent the kids' information to the government. Leo saved her life when she was almost dead, so she was already under his control even if she didn't take him. Leo has no idea what they are talking about. He has no idea what they mean with their words. He then asks them to explain more, telling him that they believe he is one of the lost children from Boyd's invasion and that they are sure his family has been looking for him. They offer to find his home. He can join the school while Celia tries to explain how it works to him. Regina says she has to leave and asks to get everything they need from the store. Regina leaves, and Celia tells Leo that he needs to do this before he can join the school. He has to do certain things in a certain way, so he has to stay there for tests. The tests are standard procedures that all new members must go through. The school is where young kids are trained to fight and protect the city in exchange for being given great powers by the gods to defeat voids. After her short speech, the school would give them all a new start in life. She tells him to go inside and says she'll meet him at the gate then. She quickly rides off on her bike and he walks into the building. There are many things that worry him. Before he fell asleep about a thousand years ago, things were really not going as planned. People have come a long way. There have been many cultures and gross. There are now other enemies they have to fight, the gaps. Does he think he can do well in that fight even if he is ready to do it? To stay alive in that place where he looks like a child, he needs to do more. He chooses to call his best friend and maid from his old life. They hear him and come running. It's the first time they've seen him in over a thousand years. Their ears pick up the words of their master right away and they greet him. They say they had been in deep sleep too for all those years and are so glad to see him. Dish asks him though, what's the deal with his new body? He has to say that his attempt to reincarnate failed and change back into the form he had when he was a person. The reason Dish wouldn't know how he looked as a human hero is because he met Dish after Dish had turned into a demon. Petri tells Lord that he looks really cute and that the new shape fits him, but Dish doesn't care about his new look. She can tell right away that he doesn't like what she said, and he says sorry right away. He then he tells them he has come to ask them for a favor and calls them dirty people. His job is to get them to do something, and they are awake and ready to do it. They have also seen how people have changed. Leo agrees that things have changed so much that he needs more knowledge before he can act. They are not the same civilized people that they left about a thousand years ago. They are asked to help him find out what humans have been doing to prepare for the Demon Lord's return. Since humans don't know much about the Demon Lord, he tells his servants to be very careful and not to use any devices that could reveal them, since humans are on the run and don't want to be caught. When Petri asks Leo what he plans to do next and if he will follow them back to where they hid, he says he isn't going. He is in a body, and bodies have needs. He needs clothes, food, and a place to stay, and living with people is the best way for him to get them. 
His answer is that he will be staying at the academy with the people who had reached out to him so he can also use that time to learn more about humans and their new culture. They promise to do their job well after they leave and he sends them away. He goes into the hospital to take his test. The first door he goes through leads to a room with long pipes all around it. He isn't sure what the room is for or why the pipes are there when all of a sudden, water from one of the pipes falls on him. But when he walks through the door, the lights get brighter and red lights start to show up. The system also makes a loud noise, and he is very holy. The noise stops, though, and the light turns off as it should. He walks out of the door and into the next one, not knowing what else he will find. But that's the end of the process because he now has his ID card in front of that door. That's when Celia comes up behind him and takes the card from him. The card would be proof of who he is until he is fully accepted by the government, she says. But she needs to make a note of the card so that she has a clear record for when she turns it in. As they walk back to her bike, she takes a picture of the card and gives it back to him. She says she needs to rest at home because she feels a little weak before going back to the office for her training. She tells him that she hasn't woken up her power yet and that she plans to keep training and fighting until she does. He doesn't understand why the gods would share such great power. She offers to show him around the area if someone is brave, since Celia hadn't awakened her power yet, so he can at least see the sake of Gaku in before he follows her to her room. As they ride through the city, he notices how happy everyone is. He remembers that the city is supposed to be at war, which is why everyone is so happy. When he asks her why the city looks so calm, she tells him that only the most skilled warriors are sent to fight. Everyone is at peace because the mobile castles are safe and make sure that voids don't attack them. She gets to Seikekwan in the end. The building is really, really big. She shows him around the government and tells him that Seikekuen is the city's main armed group and where all of their direct orders come from. The look on his face isn't what she's expecting. The building is so big that she thinks he will be shocked. She also tells him that everyone who sees it for the first time is always very excited. But he is thinking about something very different. He thinks about how to get into that kind of building without losing the fight. He could understand why they had a training room, a library, a dance hall, and even a bathhouse as she shows him around the building. She shows him his class, where he would get all of his lessons, the library with many books, and the bathhouse. He didn't know why a school would have a dance hall. Well... Kids who don't play would get bored. Then she answers the same way and agrees that they need to have fun when they're tired. They begin to walk to the room. She shows him the dorms for girls, and he sees that every woman who walks by compliments him on how good he looks. This makes Celia tell him that he would be popular. Their fun trip quickly went bad when Celia met a senior she doesn't like. For some time now, the senior had been flirting with her. That day... He asked her what she was doing with the child and if her weak company was now taking care of kids. His warning that she will be kicked out of school if she doesn't awaken her power soon makes her want to join his platoon and become his toy. This way, she can stay at this school. She says no to his offer and turns to leave, but he gets angry and pulls her hair. Leo is mad about this. The guy is scared by his power, so he bows down to Leo's feet. The senior won't give up, so he pulls out his gun but another senior stops him and tells him not to. Their system isn't allowed at school, and he's also breaking the rules by going to the girl's dorm. He walks away in a way that is embarrassing, and Sally compliments the older woman. The woman then asks about Celia's mission and says she's sorry she didn't follow her. She measures Leo for his uniform, and Celia feels weak. Once more, Sally stops on the tree for a while and continues the trip later. They get to Celia's room in the end. Other dorms Leo has seen on his way look a lot younger than this one. She tells him that the school is built on merit and that the only way to get a nice room is to be one of the smartest people there. Regina is already asleep when she gets there, so she takes Leo to her room. She tells him that every platoon will be all over him because of his healing power. She says she won't be mad if he doesn't come with her because she wants them to stay friends. He does, however, plan to join her. He tells her she doesn't need to be at that school because he doesn't trust other people to help her if she is in danger. She knows she can't defend herself when she feels helpless. She says she wants to be safe. Then she passes out. 
Leo pulls her on close and has her mouth on his vein. He tells her that he was lying. She asks him if he has healing powers. He says no, he only has dark powers, he informs her. At the end of the show, the real her died in the ruins. Patreon Dash split up to get information more quickly. If you watched the whole series, do you think Leo would keep trying to kill all humans?